Hi, I'm Jeffrey. Welcome back to Night Falls. Come, settle in for tonight's calming meditation and soothing bedtime story. As always, don't worry if you fall asleep before the end. You can drift off whenever you're ready. Come, join me beside the campfire and allow yourself to be transported to the beautiful city of Vienna, where Charles Hainsworth whiles away the hours before embarking on a cruise along the Danube River. The luxurious ship Charles finds himself on tonight is a far cry from the humble rowboat that Devani and I made by hand. But his evening drifting away from a bustling Vienna and into the tranquil obscurity of the countryside rather reminds me of the lazy moonlit river cruises Devani and I cherish so much. Just before we begin, here's a word from our valued sponsors who make this free content possible. This episode is brought to you by Certified Piedmontese Beef. Listen up, foodies. Make your next meal even better with real Nebraska beef. They have healthy, tender, delicious Italian heritage beef, grass-fed and sustainably raised on lush pastures in the Midwest. You can even create your own personally curated meat box that's shipped right to your door. To get two free steaks with any purchase over $50, use the code FREEBEEF at checkout. Learn more and shop exclusively at cpbeef.com. September 20th, 2022, VMLYNR for Zeljans. Add ID PFXE01210000. Spot title 60 Mornings Are Made for Better Things. 60 Second Radio, Full Mix. Mornings were made for better things than rheumatoid arthritis or RA. Zeljans Tofacitinib is a pill for adults with moderate to severe RA when tumor necrosis factor blockers did not work well or could not be tolerated. Zeljans can help relieve joint pain, swelling, and help stop further joint damage. Zeljans can lower your ability to fight infections. Don't start if you have one. Before and during treatment, your doctor should check for infections like TB and do blood tests. Serious, sometimes fatal infections, cancers including lymphoma and lung, blood clots, serious heart-related events, tears in the stomach or intestines, and allergic reactions have happened. People 50 and older with heart disease risk factors have an increased risk of death. Tell your doctor if you've had hepatitis B or C, have flu-like symptoms, are prone to infections, or have ever had a heart attack, stroke, clot, or other heart problems, or swelling of lips, tongue, throat, or hives. Ask your doctor about prescription Zeljans. Visit Zeljans.com or call 1-844-ZELJANS. For the best way to fall asleep with nightfalls, you can now become a premium supporter. Enjoy the entire back catalogue of Nightfalls classics, all with a rich, immersive and totally ad-free experience. If you love falling asleep to Nightfalls, Nightfalls Premium will elevate your sleep while helping to support myself and the team. We love creating Nightfalls, but without supporters, it wouldn't be possible. Join Nightfalls Premium today in just two taps on both Apple Podcasts or via the Supercast link found in the show notes for all other podcast players. Your sleep will thank you for it, and so will I. Hello, Abby here. If you've got children and find bedtimes a struggle, I'd like to tell you about Coco Sleep, a children's story podcast designed to make bedtime a dream. Coco Sleep turns a chaotic bedtime into cosy bonding time. The stories are delivered in a pace that gently slows. Rumour has it that no one's ever heard an ending. So search Coco Sleep on your favourite podcast app and let's make bedtime a dream. That's K-O-K-O Sleep and I'll see you there. Before we begin tonight's relaxing tale, why not take a moment to wind down? 
come to settle in a comfortable position. Let your eyes drift closed on the day and draw a deep breath in through your nose. When you're ready, release a long, lazy sigh out through your mouth. Breathe in through your nose, holding it for one, two, and exhaling. Draw the fresh evening air into your lungs on your in-breath, holding it for one, two, three. And as you exhale, feel any negative energy bound up within you, draining from your body on the tide of your out-breath. Each cycle of your breath is cleansing you, mind, body, and soul. Breathe in, holding for one, two, three, four, and exhale, releasing the stress and strain of the day as you do. Lying there, allow your breath to drift ever so effortlessly in and out as you release your jaw. Allow your tongue to fall away from the roof of your mouth and feel your shoulders sinking into the soft cushions beneath you. Let your palms and the soles of your feet open out. Let your hips open. Let your heart open. And let your mind open. As you allow yourself to be transported to the luxuries of a trip along the stunning Danube. On a sunny morning in July, Charles Hainsworth set off on a stroll through the streets of Vienna. He soon arrived at the banks of the Danube River. He walked along the promenade until he reached the luxury cruise ship, which was to take him on a delightful seven-day journey along the river. Charles looked at the wide expanse of river and saw the reflection of clouds drifting over the gently undulating surface. A delicious aroma of coffee from a nearby cafe was carried in the air towards him. The sun was warm and soothing on his back. Charles walked closer to the resting ship and a smile alighted on his face at the prospect of a new adventure. The sailing vessel contained four decks in total and was painted in calming pastel tones. Floor to ceiling windows ran around the decks, giving the promise of magnificent views to passengers on board. Charles crossed the wooden walkway and entered the ship through the middle entrance. Inside, He was greeted by a uniformed man who was sitting behind a polished oak desk. Charles gave his details, which were then checked on the computer. The man handed Charles a key 
and gave him directions to his room. Charles thanked the man and then walked along the carpeted corridor to the room, which would be his home for the next seven days. He arrived at his cabin and went inside. His attention was immediately drawn to the large windows and the view beyond. He placed his luggage at the side of the room and walked towards the patio doors. He opened them and stepped onto the balcony. At the side of the area was a small table and two chairs. A couple of blankets had thoughtfully been placed over the armrests in case the air should turn a little cooler at some point. Charles rested his hands on the metal railing and looked towards the city of Vienna. He had some time before the ship began its journey and there were places he wished to visit in the city. Resisting temptation to linger longer on the balcony, he returned to the main room and closed the patio doors behind him. His accommodation consisted of a small lounge area and a separate bedroom. He took a quick look around the lounge, an upholstered sofa and matching armchair were arranged around a low table. To one side was a slim desk which contained a padded file, no doubt full of useful information about his time on board. He went through to the bedroom. A large bed took up most of the room. Small tables at the sides were the perfect size to place a book and a calming nighttime drink. Charles opened the wardrobe doors and was impressed with the amount of space inside. He swiftly unpacked his clothes and hung them up. He put some of his other belongings away before entering the bathroom. The good-sized shower had a variety of luxury bathing products lined up on a shelf affixed to the tile wall. A pile of fluffy, white towels were placed inside a wicker basket, and a soft, thick dressing gown hung on the door. His accommodation felt inviting and welcoming. Charles knew he would soon feel at home. With one last look at the spectacular view through the glass doors, Charles left the room and headed in the direction of the exit doors. Within a minute, he was back on the streets of Vienna. The sun was pleasantly warm on his skin, and the breeze refreshingly balmy. Pedestrians walked through the streets dressed in light summer clothing. In his cotton shorts and t-shirt, Charles was glad he'd dressed for the warm weather too. He strolled along the wide streets taking in the sights and sounds of the stunning city, which was famed for its impressive museums and opera houses. Cars, lorries and coaches rumbled along the road. A tram trundled by on its tracks.
Charles turned his head as he heard the clopping rhythm of horses' hooves. An open-topped carriage went leisurely by, pulled by a pair of white horses. The passengers inside the carriage looked relaxed and content. Charles reckoned riding through Vienna on a sunny day was the perfect way to travel. The shops lining the streets held a tempting array of goods in their windows and included crystal jewellery, ceramic ornaments, and prints of famous artwork. Charles arrived at a paved pedestrian area which contained a variety of cafes and coffee shops. Cloth-covered tables and wooden chairs were set up outside each building. Uniformed waiters dressed in crisp, white shirts and pristine aprons attended to their customers' every need. A mixture of aromas scented the air. Richly roasted coffee, freshly made pancakes, grilled bacon and sausages, toasted bread. The mouth-watering smells almost persuaded Charles to stop at the nearest cafe to order something. But he had plans for his next meal and didn't wish to spoil his appetite. He carried on walking towards the first of the places he wished to visit. He cast appreciative glances at the tall, cream-coloured buildings along the way. Their elegance was timeless. He soon arrived at his destination, the Belvedere Museum. It held an excellent collection of Austrian art, dating back to the Middle Ages through to the present day. There was also a superb mix of work from more modern artists, including Vincent van Gogh, Claude Monet, and Auguste Rodin. But to Charles, the main draw of the museum were the paintings created by the Austrian-born artist Gustav Klimt, whose most famous piece was The Kiss. Charles entered the museum and strolled through the exhibitions. He marveled at the amazing collection of work and stopped now and again to gaze in wonder at the beauty of the art in front of him. When Charles arrived at the kiss, it almost took his breath away with its sheer size and beauty. The painting was just short of two meters tall and two meters wide. It showed a couple in a meadow entwined in an eternal embrace. The artist's use of gold leaf elevated the painting to another level and brought an ethereal feel to it. Charles found himself mesmerized by the painting. He recalled reading somewhere that the couple in the painting could have been based on Gustav Klimt and his long-term partner. He stayed there in silent contemplation for a while longer before completing his tour of the museum. Charles remained lost in admiration for the wonderful works of art he'd seen and the moments in time 
which had been captured on canvas or in stone. His stomach let out a low rumble and reminded him of the next place he wished to visit. He shortly arrived at one of Vienna's most celebrated places to eat, the Café Central. He stopped outside and gazed at the iconic building, which had been constructed in 1876. A series of four wide steps led to an impressive set of polished wood doors set beneath an arched doorway. Elegantly painted letters in gold proudly announced the name of the cafe. As Charles ascended the steps, he felt like he was about to enter an exclusive theatre. He walked through the doors and into another world. A world full of elegance and glamour. A world that remained unabashedly in the past, but with a small nod of acknowledgement to the present. Tall, cream-coloured pillars rose majestically to a beautiful vaulted ceiling. Low lights throughout the cafe cast a cosy and welcoming glow on the tables below. Glass cases contained row upon row of delicate cakes and pastries, which looked like works of art, albeit of the edible kind. Charles walked further into the cafe and thought about the famous people who had visited it over the years. Great thinkers and philosophers had discussed world events and new inventions within its walls. With a small smile, Charles realised the only thoughts going through his mind now or which cakes and pastries he should choose. He moved closer to the display cases and gazed upon the delectable array of treats. He saw chocolate cake domes topped with delicate pyramids made of spun sugar and thin layers of pink and yellow sponge sandwiched together with strawberries and thick cream. Thick slices of apple lay encased in flaky pastry, which was dusted with icing sugar. After some deliberation, Charles opted for one of Vienna's most famous confections and asked for a slice of Sacker Tort a combination of chocolate sponge, apricot jam, and chocolate ganache. Charles took a seat near the window and, for a while, watched the other customers in the cafe. All were lost in the wonder of the building and the food on offer. The sacker tort was brought over to him along with his requested cup of strong coffee, which was topped with a swirl of cream. The world slowed down as Charles slowly ate his delicious cake and drank his rich coffee. Every morsel and sip was utterly delicious. A feeling of utter contentment flowed through him. Before leaving the cafe, Charles couldn't resist buying a couple of cakes to enjoy on his balcony later on. Edible souvenirs 
were always a good idea. It was nearing three o'clock, at which time Charles had bought a ticket for an afternoon performance at the Vienna State Opera. He patted himself on the back for being so well organized and made his way to the opera house with its large, arched roof and ornate fronting. The building was aptly grand to hold the opera performances between its walls. Charles ascended the wide steps of the building, glad to have worn his smartest trousers and shiniest shoes for the occasion. The stone was weathered, but well looked after, and Charles was sure it looked more charming now than the day it was built back in 1869. The lobby loomed before him, wide and gleaming, and smartly dressed people milled around contentedly. The ceilings and walls were decorated with intricately carved gold-coated panelling, and crystal lamps lit up arched doorways and intriguing sculptures with a soft, warm glow. It was soon time to take his seat, and Charles made his way into the grand theatre, where everything before him was coated in gold or red velvet. The ceiling soared high over his head, and theatrical figures and beautiful scenes were painted delicately, circling the pendulous chandelier whose crystals cascaded from the ceiling like rainfall. The performers soon took to the stage and sang powerful, lamenting arias over the crescendos of the orchestra. Charles had never seen anything like it. Once back into the streets of Vienna, he strolled in a quiet, reflective mood for a short while, feeling he wasn't quite ready to emerge into the real world. But he hadn't too long to indulge his reveries. There was one more stop he wished to make before heading back to the ship. The Prater Amusement Park As he approached the tourist attraction, Charles's attention was drawn to the impressive ferris wheel which rose above the tree line. It was the famous Weina Riesenrad. It had been built in 1897 and was made up of 15 wood-panelled carriages. They reminded Charles of stagecoaches from a bygone era. Charles joined the short queue for the ferris wheel and was soon stepping into one of the carriages. Within moments, it began its slow and sedate journey upwards. The carriage reached its highest point and the landscape of Vienna was laid out for Charles to admire. A sea of red, green, and cream-colored roofs mingled with areas of greenery. Wide roads ran between cobbled paths and alongside paved boulevards, abundant with cafes. The carriage began its majestic descent before beginning the rotation again. Charles thoroughly enjoyed every moment of his ride. When Charles arrived back at the ship later, he was still thinking about the delightful glimpse he'd been given of Vienna. 
and he promised himself he would explore the city more fully another time. He boarded the cruise ship and headed towards his room. He exchanged cheerful greetings with passengers along the way. As soon as he entered his room, Charles put his bag of edible souvenirs on the table, kicked off his shoes and changed into his comfiest clothes. He opened the patio doors and stepped onto the balcony, feeling a light breeze against his face. He settled down on a chair and watched people who were coming aboard. Some of them carried luggage, and others were holding bags full of souvenirs. The wonderful sound of gentle chatter and soft laughter drifted towards Charles. Before too long, the last passenger walked onto the vessel, and the wooden gangway was removed. A few minutes later, Charles felt a slight movement beneath him as the engine came to life. The ship moved so slowly and smoothly that Charles didn't realize it was moving at all until he noticed the scenery changing along the river bank. People on the quayside waved to the passengers on the ship. Charles raised his hand in response. The ship sailed on. Tops of buildings were visible through the trees, and the distant sound of opera music was vaguely audible. Charles settled further back in his seat and took some deep, refreshing breaths, feeling more and more relaxed by the minute. The buildings at his side became sparser, and soon open fields appeared on either side of the river. Birds swooped through the sky occasionally dipping down to the water. Near the river bank, a family of ducks swam serenely along, paying no attention to the ship cruising by. The sounds of Vienna faded altogether and were replaced by the gentle noise of water lapping at the side of the ship. The scenery was a picturesque panorama of perfect postcard moments. Distant hills appeared on the horizon, some tall enough to be wreathed in wisps of clouds. Charles looked towards a grey stone castle nestled between the hills, with its turrets and moat. It looked as though it had been transported straight from the pages of a storybook. The ship sailed on. Charles took some more deep breaths and closed his eyes. The movement of the vessel was smooth and soothing. A warm breeze caressed Charles's face. Birds called out to each other from the treetops in the fields. A quiet splash was heard as an animal dove into the water. Charles basked in the tranquility of his peaceful environment. A while later, he roused himself and decided to explore the ship. 
As it was nearing dinner time, he changed out of his casual clothes and into smarter attire. He left his room and headed along the corridor. Everyone he passed gave him a cheery hello. He came upon a snug library set with comfy armchairs and a wonderful collection of books. Some of them had been written by local authors. He pictured himself in one of the seats, lost in a good book while the hours passed pleasantly by. Charles walked through to the lounge area which had many low tables, surrounded by thickly upholstered chairs. He noticed the chairs nearest the window had been arranged at angles so that visitors could make the most of the ever-changing view. Charles headed up the stairs to the deck area and walked past a line of padded loungers. Each one sending out a silent invitation to take a seat, relax, and watch the world go by. At the front of the ship was a wooden deck that gave panoramic views of the river on all sides. Passengers sitting at tables were chatting quietly with each other, Charles walked to the front on the deck and rested his hands on the wooden rail. The meandering Danube River stretched into the distance ahead. At just over 1,700 miles, it was Europe's second longest river. It ran from the Black Forest of Germany all the way to the Black Sea in Eastern Europe, passing through ten countries on the way. It was said that Napoleon once described it as the Queen of Europe's rivers. A couple joined him at the rail and shared his appreciation of the river. They fell into an easy conversation about other river cruises they had been on over the years, and those they still wished to make. A companionable silence settled on them as they surveyed the gently undulating river. The sun dipped lower in the sky and the white clouds turned pink. An announcement was made which notified passengers it was time for dinner, and could they make their way to the dining area. Charles walked with the couple towards the dining room. When they got there, the room was abuzz with chatter, Tables covered in snowy white cloths held china plates and gleaming cutlery. Crystal glasses twinkled in the soft overhead lights. Charles was shown to a table where three people were already sitting. He introduced himself and soon discovered the reason for their cruise was to celebrate the 90th birthday of their grandmother, Elizabeth. Elizabeth smiled at Charles from across the table and said she was having a wonderful time and hoped there would be dancing later. The new friends chatted amiably whilst they waited for their food to arrive. During their delicious meal of poached salmon and freshly steamed vegetables, their conversation flowed easily. Once dessert was finished and plates cleared away, 
a quartet of musicians appeared from seemingly nowhere and arranged themselves on the small stage at the end of the room. Elizabeth's eyes lit up with joy and anticipation, hoping there would be music to dance to. Her hopes were soon fulfilled. The familiar strains of a much-loved melody resonated throughout the room. The blue Danube, the beautiful tune composed by Johann Strauss in 1866. The jubilant song caused a smile to appear in all faces, but none smiled wider than Elizabeth. Charles stood up, bowed in Elizabeth's direction, and asked if he could have the honour of dancing with her. Elizabeth was on her feet in a flash, with her hand extended towards Charles. They weren't the only couple to take to the floor, and by the time they reached the dancing area, a dozen couples were already performing an elegant waltz around it. Charles danced with Elizabeth for a while longer, before they moved on to other partners. The evening passed delightfully by. Through the large windows of the ship, Charles noticed the sky growing darker. Twinkling stars appeared, and the moon rose over a line of darkened trees. All too soon, the evening drew to a close. Fond farewells were exchanged along with promises to meet up the next day. When Charles entered his room later on, he realized he wasn't ready to let the day end just yet. So he headed to the balcony and took a seat in one of the comfy chairs. He pulled the blanket free from the armrest and placed it over himself. Lights from the ship reflected across the water in a shimmering dance. An owl hooted from a tree at the side of the river. The water lapped gently against the ship. The soothing motion of the vessel caused a delightful drowsiness to alight on Charles. He closed his eyes and became absorbed in the sights and sounds of the night. Tomorrow, they would arrive at Bratislava, and after that would be a stop at Budapest. More cities to explore, and more memories to make. A little while later, Charles took himself to bed and settled down beneath the thick, comfy covers. Within minutes, he was fast asleep. The ship sailed on, farther and farther into the night.